so hey guys i hope that everybody's doing okay please bear with me again in this video because it is going to be a little disorganized because i have notes everywhere um it took a few days for this video to actually come together and for me to be able to get it out <laughs> um hence why the notes are everywhere but i think it's well, I don't think, I know it's a very important subject, especially now that we know that a lot of us are fixing to be blessed and stepping into our promised lands and finally things are fixing to be aligned where, um, you know, our blessings are coming through, the wicked are being exposed, you know, you guys know all about the eclipse and the data behind that and just, you know, just the body of Christ really just coming together and moving in such a wonderful and awesome way. And um, I just want to talk about, especially since a lot of these evil and wicked people are being exposed. That's my children in the background. <laughs> they just got home. Um, to really stress the importance of flying or being, I should say, I use the word flying, but flying with your select few people that, that should be in your life. Because at this time and at this season in our lives, a lot of people that cannot go with us or step into our promised land are going to be taken out of our lives in some way, shape, or form. Um, rather it be you left or, you know, some other things happened, you know. <laughs> but, um, I also want to stress the importance of really weeding out the friends that you don't need to have in your life and really just expelling those people that are saying and claiming that they are godly and that they love the Lord and that they live a godly life. But everything that you see and that you know, especially when you put it up against the Bible, is not what they are, then you need to stop associating with these people. You need to get them away. And you don't need to feel bad for it. Pray for them, of course. Pray for them and don't wish them any harm or bad. Um, you know, but you definitely are going to start seeing these people, you know, the, starting to see their the fruit or what uh, I should say, not the fruit. What they sowed is going to be what they're going to start reaping, rather, rather it be good or bad, you know. And this is biblical. This is all throughout scripture that whatever you sow, you reap. You see throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament where the wicked received their punishments. You know, God gets tired. He's tired of all of this crazy foolishness that's going on around us, you know. Um, and you cannot just be hurting God's people and walking in a manner that's sinful and serving Satan and God is okay with this. You know, it, it doesn't go like that. <laughs> So let me go ahead and get started with my video. I'm going to entitle this video. I think what I'm going to entitle this video is used, abused, rejected, and forgotten. And my notes that I put for this video is, although you were the one whom was used, abused, rejected, and forgotten by many, the world shuns and looks down on you it caused you to turn to god and truly seek him and he heard your cry and in all of my experiences y'all and everything that i have gone through that was not desirable put it that way the best thing that came out of it was that i came close to god i cultivated a relationship with my father god and when I say that that was the best thing that could have happened to me, I am so blessed and so happy and so thrilled that this happened to me. Um, so really, I can thank those people. I can thank the rejection. I can thank the abuse. I can thank the matter in the matter in which they used me because it grew me so much closer. It made me stronger. It gave me a hope and a strength in my Lord that I, I, I can't explain to you guys. Um, and now that the blinders have been taken off of me and I see these people for who they truly are and what they truly are, I know that I was always the one that was good, you know, that had the good inside of me. I just, it was, it was just 
stomped on by these people and it was trying they were trying to stomp out my light and the same thing with you all you've got to open your eyes to that you know you and it takes coming close to god getting in your word being in prayer really starting to let go of what the world thinks about you and the matter in the matter of which they treat you um because a lot of these people are operating in spirits that are not of god unfortunately a lot of them are <laughs> Um, and when you start to look around, you actually see that a lot more people are not versus people that are. And so I also want to stress the importance of flying with your select few. Um, I'm going to read just a quick scripture to you guys really quick. Um, this comes out of 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 11 through 13. But now I am writing you that you must not associate with anyone who calls himself a brother but is sexually, sexually immoral or greedy, an idolater or a slanderer, a drunkard or a swindler. With such a man do not eat. What business is it of mine to judge those outside of the church? Are you not to judge those inside of the church? God will judge those outside of the church, but expel the wicked man from among you. So if you, and, and this is unfortunately so many people, so many people, and I'm guilty of accepting these people in my own life. I'm not even going to lie to you and say that I've been Miss Perfect and that I have it all together because as a matter of fact, it, when I get to tell my testimony on what currently situation, my current situation, it will shock you guys. But um, anyway, let me go, let me get off of that. But when you accept these manner of people that are saying, oh, I'm so godly and, you know, I, I, God knows my heart. I believe in God and they are openly slanderous, idolatrous, sexually immoral, greedy, all of the things that God says that you are not supposed to be. And you see them openly living this way. You do not even want to associate or eat with these people. You know, you do not need to have any manner of which these people in your life, you want to pray over them and stay away from them. You know, you want to stay, keep them out of your lives because I'm telling you, I am telling you guys, these people are out to seek to ruin your life. They're out to seek the ruin, to ruin the body of Christ. They're selfish. They're ungodly. They're serving Satan and, 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 and that's their agenda. And you do not want to accept these people in your life. Take it from me. If you accept these people into your life, thinking that you are going to help change them or help shape them into a godly person or, you know, change them into your beliefs or whatever you think you can do for these people, they're going to ruin your life. Take it from me. I know what I'm talking about, guys. I know what I'm talking about. Don't be deceived by these people. Don't be deceived by these people. Don't spend any matter of which trying to help these people. You pray for these people and keep them out of your life and keep them at a distance. Because <laughs> um, I'm talking to those that these are your family members, your friends, you know, it's your so-called friends anyway, your co-workers, even your spouses, you know, things like that. Um, things that we fell for, things that they totally decept, dece deceived us about and deceived us on. You know, we were naive. We were naive in thinking that we could help these people and change these people or that they really weren't what they were because they totally put on this mask of narcissist mask, you know, trying to charm you to get you in their life. And they totally turned around and stabbed you in the back and ruined your life, you know, but rest assured in God that whatever way that they hurt you, they're going to be hurt as well. Your job is to pray over them that God have mercy and that God help them to repent and turn their hearts and their life to him and turn it around get away from the evil and the sin and the wickedness that they are indulging in now if they're totally unrepentant and they have been turned over to a reprobate mind and heart and you know it i would seek god to even pray over those people because you don't want to stand in god's way when it's time to deal with these people you know <laughs> so my best advice would be to keep those people out of your life to begin with don't even associate with these people like the bible just said don't associate with these people run listen to those red flags that the holy spirit is giving you run away from them 
I'm telling you, they are going to ruin your life. They're going to ruin your life. Now, the reason why I'm going to talk about rejection, the world rejecting you, and they're thinking that you are just less than, and you don't belong, and, and, and they're looking down on you, and because you might be a little more quieter than other people. You don't act like they act. You're not you're not drinking, you're not smoking, you're not out partying, you're not out being flamboyant and 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 and, and sleeping around with who can sleep around with so many as many people as they it's like a game to them. They want to sleep around with as many people as they can sleep with or let's go ahead and trade this partner and sleep with these people and have orgies and all of this crazy stuff and 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 okay, everybody's trying a woman now and I'm a woman and I want to try a woman. I, oh, everybody's trying a guy now and I'm a guy. No, the Bible speaks a against all of this stuff and they reject you because you don't indulge in any of this stuff you don't want to talk you don't want any matter of dealing with people that are talking about other people and hating other people and slandering other people's names and and drinking and smoking and partying and dressing sexy and all of this crazy madness you don't want anything to do with that they're gonna look down on you and say you're you know why aren't you like us why you know what's wrong with you you think you're better than us you think that you're oh well you don't like us you know let them say whatever they want to say let them do whatever they want to as long as they're not harming you of course but i'm telling you guys don't give in go in the way that the lord is telling you to go it doesn't matter what they are saying and the rejection Oh my goodness, the rejection is so, so real. They will reject you like you are just nothing. You know, they'll beat you down to a pulp, but it doesn't matter. You've got to remember who your father God is and who he's called you to be and who he told you to be in him. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. <laughs> Don't listen to them. I'm going to read you another scripture um, from Jabez. You guys know who Jabez was. Um, this is in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 through 10. Jabez was more honorable than, the, than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. So she already spoke <laughs> pain in his life just because she gave birth to him in pain. She was like, I'm going to name him pain, you know, <laughs> because I went through pain. So she already at the beginning spoke pain into Jabez's life. But it says, Jabez cried out to God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me. Keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. Don't let them speak death into your life. You say like Jabez said, Oh, that God would bless me. You cry out to God and ask him to bless you, to expand your territory, to give you the things that they're saying that you cannot have and that, that, you, they, that they're saying that you cannot be. You know, you don't want to be the bearer of pain. You don't want to be the bearer of whatever they're calling you. Um, and I'm not going to use any of that language in this video, but they are trying to bring you down in every, any way that they can. You cry out to God and you ask him the opposite. Don't believe them. Don't believe them. <laughs> you know, you ask them the opposite and look at what God did. He said, I granted and, and, I, and he granted his request. You have a good heart in you and they don't. And that's what they see. They see that you are a good person. They see that you don't have the the mess that they have inside of them, that they they want what's inside of you and you don't allow for them to take that away from you. Don't allow for them to take, for them to take it away from you. Keep your distance, keep them away from you, block them, whatever you have to do to get them out of your life and your heart, even if you can't leave them right then and there, you block them out. Don't give in to their to their to their schemes you know because they're serving satan they're serving satan and you don't want any part of that in your life okay so i'm sorry i'm all over the place and of course i took my pen out <laughs> marking my place um okay so let me go to my notes here oh 
I was talking about the promised land, the promised land. Now, these are notes that I wrote down talking about your promised land when God does bless you for, for your obedience, for being righteous before him and in his eyes and obeying and loving him and walking in his ways. You guys, the promised land, you're going to be able to just step into it and walk into it for being obedient, taking this crazy abuse and this rejection and being used and treated this way. You know, they're, they're going to get to see you step into that promised land. <laughs> so this is what I wrote. Pray for your healing now. I was talking to my mother the other day and I was telling her that from being abused and used and rejected in the way that you have, you're going to need to heal from it. So before you even step into that promised land, start praying for your healing now from the matter of which these people have used and abused and rejected you. Start praying for your healing now. Because you're going to need to go, when you step into that promised land, you're going to need to be, be, walk into your peace finally. Be rejuvenated. Be in you're going to walk into that calling and purpose that you have been called to be all along. That they were rejecting you for. That they were using you for. That they were abusing you for. You're going to be used, not them. You're going to be used in such a profound and magnetic way. It's going to be awesome. Excuse my kids in the background. <laughs> It's going to be awesome. So you're going to need to heal from all of the trauma that they put you through. And all of the drama that they put you through. You're going to need to heal. So start praying for that healing now. Even before you walk into that promise that God has called you to. Even before you walk into that promised land. Okay. So um, let's see. I put when you step into the promised land, everything will flow. You will not have to strive to receive it. So. A lot of times we are, and I'm guilty of this too, we are, we're impatient. We want to make things happen the way that we want them to happen. We want them to happen right now. We want, so we're, so a lot of times we want to put things together. We want to try to go get that job or whatever it might be because we, we, we want it now. You know, we want to see it come into fruition now. But when it's from God, I have seen this time and time and time and time and time and time again in my life. It just flows. You know, everything comes into place. Everything falls into place. Boom, 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 boom. I didn't have to strive for it. I'm going to give you guys an example like this house that I'm that we have now. I remember for years, we looked and we looked and we looked and we went and looked at countless properties. We went and applied for countless properties. We, you know, we tried to make it happen. Because we knew that we were growing out of the apartment that we were in. And of course, you know, it was our wish. It was our dream. It was our hope to have a house and have a place for our kids to go outside and play. And, you know, call it our own, you know. <laughs> and so I remember my husband receiving this call from his brother-in-law. And he said, hey, are you guys still looking for a house? And he said, yeah, we're still looking for a house. <laughs> and he said, well, it just so happens that my niece is moving. She's looking to get out of her property, which is an acre of land. We have an acre of land. Um, she's looking to get out of her property. And um, I want you guys to come and take a look at this property. And so my husband didn't even tell me what we were going to do. He just put me in the car and he said, hey, we're going to go look at something. I want you to come with me. So I said, okay, let's go. Let's go. And he took me to this house, you know, and I'm like, okay, what are we doing here? He said, we're fixing to look at this house to potentially buy it. I was like, you're kidding, you know, and I'm looking on my phone, you know, like, where is this property listed? How much is this? You know, what, what, what's, what's happening? That's my phone. Sorry, guys. Um, sorry. <laughs> That's probably my husband. Okay, anyway, um, so he said, come on, I'm, I'm looking on my phone and I'm like, where's this property? He said, well, it's, you know, I got, he, he explained how it happened. I got the phone call. We're going to go look in. When we both walked into this house, both of our jaws dropped and we were like, we don't care what it takes. We want this property. 
So we called a real estate agent that um, we knew already. I guess my husband went to school with her. And when I say everything came into place and we didn't have to strive to get this place, it was like, boom, you know, the finances were there, the lender was there, the real estate, I mean, everything, God just put it all together and we were in it within the month, we were in it, <laughs> you know, and it wasn't listed on sale, I mean, on, on you know, on a job, on a real estate board or anything, God just put it right in our hands. And so all I'm saying is when you go into the promised land and God finally moves you into your purpose and your true calling for you, it's going to flow. He's going to make everything come into a line. Everything that you need, he's going to bring it into alignment. Everything that you, that you, you know, that all the, all the positions you need to be in, all the people that you need to have, all the finances that you need to have, it's all going to be aligned. That is how God works. You don't have to strive for it. If it is yours, you're going to have it. When God wants you to have it and it's time for you to have it, it's yours. You don't have to toil for it. You know, it's yours. It's all going to flow. That's what I mean by it's going to flow. It's just all going to boom, 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 line up, you know. Um. So that was another thing that I put. Okay. And this is the other thing that I was talking about. Remove all the people that cannot and will not be able to come with you. You do not want somebody that you know is a tyrant and operating in Satan and in the devil to come with you because that's what their pattern is. That's all they're going to try to do. They're going to try to bring you down through their jealousy or be whatever it be that Satan's trying to bring you down through them through. Get them out of your life. Start praying now. If it's somebody that you can't just remove out of your life like that, start praying now that God make a way for it to happen however it is that he's got to make this person get out of your life and some of them are just going to drop off you know some of them are just going to leave you know <laughs> but don't be trying to hold on to them if you know without a doubt this person cannot go with you because they're just going to be a tyrant and trying to bring you down and don't feel bad about it Allow God to work in your life and move them away from you and out of your life in whichever way. And I'm talking about whatever way he needs to. God will remove that person out of your life. <laughs> Start praying for it now. <laughs> okay. And then I put seek God first. The thing that God has called you to is going to be much bigger and grander than you. And you are going to need to seek and trust him in order to do this. It will bear much fruit this time because it's a call from God, his mandate for you from him. It won't be like before when you weren't bearing much fruit or it was just unfulfilling or you or draining or you dreaded doing it because it's something that is from God. Whatever it is that God has called you to do when you step into that promised land and when you receive what God has for you, it is from him. And it's not something that's not going to bear nothing or just something to get you by or whatever it might be. This is going to bear fruit for his kingdom. It's going to bear fruit for your life. It's going to bear fruit for those around you. It is going to be prosperous in every way that it can be prosperous is going to be life giving but you're going to have to continue to seek god you're going to have to put him first over it whatever it is put him first over it continue to seek him for it and through it and in it because it's much bigger and greater and grander than you because remember it's not just about you it is about his kingdom now and when you stepped when you step over into that promised land just like the children of Egypt did you're going to have to call upon him you're going to have to really start discerning what is for you what isn't for you who is for you who isn't for you i'm talking about every little detail that is part of this seek god put god first remember seek god and his kingdom and all these things will be added on to you remember that's biblical You've got to seek him for this. Don't make the mistake that you made countless times before when you were out of the promised land and you were trying to make stuff work and make people happen in your life and whatever it was that you were trying to do, do, do it different this time. Call upon God first. Seek him first before you make a move. 
this is going to be different because it's bigger than you. It's God's purpose. It's God's mandate for you now. And so you've got to continue to seek him in order to even do this, to make this work. Stay in prayer. Stay in a humble spirit. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Call upon him before you even make a move, you know? You've got to. You've got to. Okay, so... Um, and then the last thing I put is you want to be careful whom you allow to come into your life, seeking God first so you don't suffer with wicked, evil, narcissistic, which is what people call evil and wicked people nowadays. People, you want to make sure that you seek God first. You don't want to be set back this time. Like I said just a minute ago, you don't want to be set back by anybody <laughs> this time. You don't. You want to make sure that the people that you're dealing with are the people that God wants you to deal with. And he's going to bring those people into your life. But even, even God's elect get deceived. Because these people sound so charming and so convincing. And, and, and they make it sound like it's, you know, it, it's like it's from God. You know, I have been deceived that way. I have been deceived that way thinking that this person is from God when it wasn't. And they made it seem like that at the beginning. It was it was wonderful. It was great. And then their true colors came out. And they'll ruin your life. Take it from me, you guys. Take it from me. Don't allow this to happen to you when you step into your promised land. Seek God first, even on the people that you associate with. Make sure that they're from God. Make sure that they're from God. Because they will. They'll ruin your life. <laughs> and it's not funny. It really isn't. It's not funny. I know I'm chuckling, but it is not funny. It's not. God, it's not. It's so serious. So people are out here. They are venomous. They are, they're poison. <laughs> they're poison. And God, was I so naive God, was I so naive. It's all too important to seek the Lord now in everything and every dealing that you deal with. <sighs> my goodness. And my heart goes to anyone that is dealing with these crazy people. <sighs> my goodness. But anyway, that is what I have for you guys today. Uh, my last thing. I'm sorry. Don't ignore the Holy Spirit. He gives you warning about everything, any and everything, every demon that's trying to come against you, every bad thing that's trying to come into your life. He gives you warning. Listen to him. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Always continue to pray and to continue to seek God. Always, always, always. It's so important. That's the best thing I could have got in my life was my relationship with God because it guides and leads me in everything that I do now. And stay prayerful, guys. Stay prayerful. Stay in your word. Stay in your word. Stay close to God. Make him number one. I love y'all. I hope y'all have a wonderful day. Bye.